I'm starting SpongeBob by drawing his cheek. That's because I can use the cheek to create the eye and can make a little connection from the eye down to his nose. It's all about what I can draw first and what other lines I can draw off of that first line to get my character going. I can use that same basic logic to get down to SpongeBob's mouth, but before I can draw the bottom of his mouth, I need to draw his teeth so that the line of the bottom of his mouth has somewhere to go. Just practicing this much of SpongeBob's face is a great way to start cartoon drawing. SpongeBob's eyelashes are a little bit thicker than a single line, so I block them out first and then fill them in with black. I find it's best to draw pupils first to really give a sense of the character and then draw the irises around the pupils. SpongeBob's face is floating in the middle of his head, so it's hard to know exactly where to put the lines that determine the outside of his head. You kind of have to eyeball it, and it's one of those things that you get better at with time. In any case, you find a sense of the right amount of waviness and go from there. I also know that SpongeBob's shoulder is going to be in front of his body visually, so I want to draw that early. The lines that define SpongeBob's corner and back are also to flavor, but you do want to make them feel a little bit like he's wider at the top than at his waist. SpongeBob's porous texture changes in different depictions, but it doesn't hurt to have a reference image to give you some sense of where to place his holes. Drawing hands is hard, but it's easier when you remember that you don't have to draw each finger in its entirety. I draw SpongeBob's body opposite the way that I draw his head. SpongeBob's head I draw from the inside out. SpongeBob's body I draw the outside before filling in the details. It's always case by case whether you're drawing out to in or in to out. But play around with the concept and you'll get comfortable making that decision yourself. Again, remember with hands that you don't have to draw the whole finger and you can imply that there's more to something by butting the line into something else. SpongeBob's shirt sleeve and pant legs are both fairly easy shapes. You just want to know where you're starting your line and where you're ending it. SpongeBob's legs are basic straight lines ended with curves. And his shoes are a slightly tricky shape, but you're going to fill them in with black anyway, so if you mess up on the details, it's okay. Messing up any of this is okay. It's just a drawing, and you can often find interesting ways to hide your mistakes. Don't forget the stripes of his socks. Filling in black is harder than you might think. I always work the edges of the lines that I've already drawn and fill towards the middle from there. Yeah, I totally forgot to draw SpongeBob's belt in this depiction, but I feel pretty good about it actually. If you like this, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and make a comment to tell me who you'd like to see me draw next. I'll do a tutorial for whichever character gets the most likes. I'm also teaching a summer drawing class on TikTok, and that's going every Tuesday and Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Pacific time through the summer. Thanks for watching, and I hope you're having a great day. See you in the next video.